Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today we are going to start with the fourth chapter of VTH and that is the vehicle performance testing. In this entire chapter we are going to discuss about how to improve this particular vehicle performance. So the major aspect or the points which we need to focus on which are the points or the parts of the particular automobile which is draining out the particular efficiency of the automobile. We will begin with that particular concept. So let's begin with this concept of the energy consumption in the automobile. Say for example, if we are supplying the 100 percentage of the fuel to this particular engine that the 100 percentage is not been converted into this particular usability of at least 25 percentage even. What the efficiency in normal of all of the vehicles which we are getting is around 15, right? So apart from that 85 percentage of energy has been lost at the different different components. So which these are the points which we need to elaborate in detail in our today's class. So the first energy losing apart is this engine itself from the 100 percentage of the fuel 62.4 percentage of energy has been lost at the engine part itself just in order to convert the fuel energy into the form of generation of indicated power in the engine right but you may come out with a certain ways through which we can at least reduce this number right because if you are reducing only some fraction of energy um, from the 62.4 percentage loss then it can have a huge effect on the final energy consumption or the average mileage of the vehicle. The second loss is due to the idling loss. Idling loss that the vehicle need to be stationary at the signal part. So that is accounting about 17.7 percentage. We need to think about the proper infrastructure. We need not to rely on the just only the vehicle part in order to reduce the 17.7 percentage loss. The third one that is the accessories loss. Accessory loss accounts nearly about 2.2 percentage in the particular automobile. This is maybe due to the running of certain uh, of the components like power windows which you are running or some of the music system you are uh, keeping on. So that is uh, the accessories loss which is happening in this particular automobile. You can may find a ways through which that can be reduced. The another loss is the driveline loss that is accounting about 5.6 percentage. No doubt we are now thinking about different ways in order to which uh, this loss can be reduced, right? This transmission loss can be reduced. We can have proper gear design in that particular domain. Apart from that, next one is the aerodynamic drag. The wind force that has been striking on the particular vehicle that is accounting about 2.6 percentage of loss and that is totally totally dependent on the outer profile of the vehicle right how good the vehicle you design based on that this percentage can be lowered you might have heard about this fluid verna right the profile of the fluidic verna appears like that the wind flow would be flowing like a fluid right so it will pass very easily through the surface of the vehicle instead of putting a drag on that right so if you are designing a vehicle in such a way this 2.6 percentage can be reduced to a greater extent this figures uh, percentage figures uh, is the on an average value of most of the vehicle another loss is due to the rolling resistance the wheel is traveling on the road surface that has been accounting about 4.2 percentage was this is completely unavoidable but once you focus on the better tire tread design this number can be lowered and the last one in the case of loss is overcoming the inertia and the braking loss whenever you are stopping at a signal you are applying a brake so that would be a loss of inertia once again you start the vehicle the naturally initial torque requirement would be higher so during that span of time we are having this 5.8 percentage of loss in the efficiency part right so the first target in the vehicle performance was the energy consumption the next target is the emission part this is the second aspect which is actually reducing the performance of the vehicle that's why we are taking into account in this particular chapter Whenever we talk about this vehicle emissions, naturally there are two different kinds of emission we talk about that is the exhaust gas emissions and the evaporative emissions. Evaporative emissions of the fuel is nothing but whenever you are filling up your fuel in your car, 
naturally the evaporation of the fuel takes place that is evaporative fuel emission but major losses due to the exhaust gas which is coming from this exhaust gas pipe so which are the different gases been coming out let us understand that part in detail so the primary gases which is coming out is the first one is sulfur oxide that is a combination of sulfur and oxides basically this gas is totally colorless you won't identify with the help of certain color it is odorless gas you, you won't find any smell of that particular gas so it is neither visible nor you can smell so it is very difficult to find out that the sulfur oxide is present in the exhaust gas apart from that it is totally tasteless some of the gas is having even tendency that it at the tip of the tongue you may feel the taste of that particular gas even if it is there in the atmosphere right so this particular gas is completely non visible it is not having any smell or any taste the second gas is the nitrogen oxide nitrogen oxide the best part is you can easily identify with its color because it is reddish brown in color but the problem which is arising due to this presence of nitrogen oxide is very high the major problem is the ozone layer generation and obviously that it is having an effect on even the acid rain. The next one is the hydrocarbon. Why this hydrocarbon is present? This hydrocarbon is actually indication of the unmanned completion of the combustion, right? This fuel material is made up of hydrocarbon chain. If it is left unburned, then obviously it can lead to the direct formation of hydrocarbon at the exhaust gas pipe, right? But this can be identified with its smoke. Apart from that, it is having a huge effect on the ozone layer and it may lead to the formation of a leukemia that is a blood cancer. So we need to have a lower value of that hydrocarbon. <clears throat> Next one is the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is actually leading to the problem of global warming. Apart from that, it doesn't have any other impact. Next one is a lead generation. Nowadays, you find this unleaded petrol, unleaded diesel. But earlier days, it was there in a heavy quantity. This heavy metal like of appearance would be there at the exhaust pipe. And it is having huge impact on the nervous system of the human being. So, these were the major gases, but still uh, the last but not least, that is a carbon monoxide. It is completely colorless, tasteless and very toxic gas. This gas can lead to the fatal accident even. The carbon dioxide is just having the global warming. But when you mix uh, one particular oxygen molecule in carbon monoxide, it will get converted into carbon dioxide. But if they won't receive that one molecule of oxygen, if it is remain in the state of carbon monoxide, then it can have a huge impact on our health. If you remain there in this particular atmosphere where the carbon monoxide is in high quantity for a longer period of time duration, then it can lead to even fatal accident. Although you won't identify that particular gas with its color, neither you will feel any taste, but you will start feeling dizziness. You will start feeling laziness due to the presence of that carbon monoxide gas. Now, this particulate matter is actually in the form of matter, but it is affecting heart and lung. That's all about the different gases which is present. In today's lecture, we are keeping up to this. Thanks for watching.